Assalamu alaikum everyone and today we are going to talk about determining between elimination reactions and substitution reactions. Now, before we predict what reaction will happen, we need to get a few things straight. Mainly four things. The first is the type of some substrate. The second is the nucleophile strength and leaving group ability. Third is temperature. And fourth is steric hindrance. So let's go through them one by one. First, there are for you no know, types of substrate. Now there are always gonna be sp3 carbons, and there is going to be three types of substrate: primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary haloalkane is unstable, so there is not gonna be any sn2, sn1, or e1. SN2 is possible due to very less to non steric hindrance. Now, a secondary haloalkane doesn't like the type of substance, does not give us enough info on what can be possible. Now, a tertiary haloalkane has too much steric hindrance for SN2. SN1 is a good candidate, however, because the more substituted a carbocation is, the more stable it is. So E1 is also possible and so is E2. Now we have to go to the second type of thing we need to determine and this will be divided into two parts. First is nucleophile strength. We know from our elimination reaction video that nucleophilicity parallels basicity. And even though this isn't always the case, we can see some correlation, like how hydroxide is a stronger base than water, and therefore it is a stronger nucleophile and how ammonia is stronger than water. Now, you might be asking, what does the strength have to do? Well, as you can see, I have one type of substance and it's gonna go through two types of nucleophile. It is a secondary haloalkane, so as we said, it wasn't enough info on the substance. Now, water is not strong enough for SN2, Therefore, it'll do SN1 or and get a really racemic mixture. Now, hydroxide is strong enough to do SN2, so it will be SN2. This is because hydroxide ions are so strong, it can basically bully around the substance doing SN2. Bromide is stable enough by itself so SN1 is very possible and water is far capable from to get rid of the carbocation. Halides are very common nucleophiles so let's also look at those. Now in a polar a product solvent, basically a solvent that doesn't have protons available for dipole-dipole interaction, fluoride is the best halide ion for the nucleus. And the reverse is true for polar protic substances, glyophile. The reason is because as we go down the periodic table, the atoms get larger and the larger they get, the more they can spread out their negative charge therefore it being the stronger nucleophile now let's look at the next half leaving group ability now i put this in the same category because it follows that if it's such a good nucleophile and is very excited to get in the molecule it won't be in a rush to leave so since hydroxide is a very very 
strong nucleophile, it is gonna be a terrible leaving group. But bromide is both a good nucleophile and a good leaving group because bromide is stable by itself. Since water is not such a strong nucleophile, it is also a good leaving group. Next is the steric hindrance on the nucleophile. So we talked about a bit about steric hindrance on the substrate, now on the nucleophile. If it has too much steric hindrance, it won't be able to approach a substance. So something like hydroxide is very small, so it can approach a substance almost instantly now h3 h3 co minus has more steric hindrance but is a bit able to approach a substance now c3 h6 o minus has a lot of steric hindrance and is not gonna be able to approach a substance easily and third butoxide is just too much steric hindrance. This also explains why nucleophilicity isn't interchangeable with basicity because if it has more steric hindrance, as we said, tert butoxide is a very strong base, but it has too much steric hindrance for being a good nucleophile. The next and last step is to know the temperature of the room it, the reaction is going on. So this is connected to the Gibbs free energy. I highly request that video if you want to understand this part. First, we have to understand elimination reactions are entropically favorable. Let's look at a type of uh, reaction. Now in substitution, we can see that there are two things as the reactants and two things as the products. Now in elimination, there are two things as the reactants and three things as the products. And that means elimination has more disorder, therefore it is entropically favorable. Now let's look at the Gibbs free equation. This is a factor, but it's being multiplied by T, which is temperature. So if temperature is hot, then M entropy and temperature will combined to a very high number but if temperature is cold then entropy and temperature would multiply to a very low number and favor substitution so that's all there is to it thank you for watching if you want more videos about math and science then please Subscribe, leave a like down below, and comment if I made any mistakes in my video. And thank you for watching, I will, and I will see you next time. Bye!